This is just like a piece of clothing. Some people look good on it, but uh, not for everyone. The same is true for picking movements. So to me, I think Nandu, it's more like boring. Like it's, <laughs> you must have strong basics. Otherwise, the choreography cannot be showcased. Hello, my name is Rebecca. I am a wushu athlete. And in this video, I had the distinct pleasure of chatting with Lai Xiao Xiao, international and all China games wushu champion. We are discussing modern Taolu. For those who don't know, Taolu or a form is a series of wushu movements that make up routine. Nowadays, in high-level modern wushu competition, athletes will design their own forms to highlight their strengths. This is different from previous eras of wushu where athletes would do compulsory forms which all had the same movements. If you're interested in that topic, definitely check out the link below for my conversation with Brendan Sugiyama. We go quite in depth. In this conversation today, Sunny and I will be discussing several topics including an athlete's transition from doing compulsory forms to doing optional forms, how an athlete can bring out their strengths in their form, and how certain athletes and provinces distinguish themselves by establishing their own style. This video is part of a two-part series. In the second part, Sunny will be breaking down her winning straight sword form from the All China Games. So if you're interested in that, please do subscribe. And without further ado, I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you so much for meeting with me. Um, really, today I am interested in better understanding what is Taolu, what makes a good Taolu, how does someone begin to craft something, and I think you're really the, the modern queen of Taolu, so it's the perfect guest to have. Thank you. No problem, no problem. Cool, so to start, would you please give yourself a little introduction of who you are and your greatest accomplishments? Okay. Hello everyone, I'm the World Wushu Champion Sunny Lai, so my Chinese name is Lai Xiao Xiao. So you can call me Sunny, it's more easy, and also you can call me Xiao Xiao. So I got the champion like 2015 in Indonesia International uh, Championship, so I got the uh, spear first uh, place, and also like 2016 in Fuzhou, it's the first uh, World Cup. And so I got the spear too, because you are connected about the uh, uh, international championship. So you have chance to compete like Taolu Cup. Mm. So, and also I got like all China national game. So mm, like, of course. Uh, yeah, Changquan and spear and uh, straight sword and the together and like got the medal. I mean, congratulations. I think that's still Thank a pretty you. recent accomplishment. So I'm so honored Thank to you. have you here. Thank you. <laughs> cool. So to begin, I thought I would just kind of go ahead and ask about when athletes are younger, they oftentimes do the compulsory Taolu um, and yes. then they do um, optional forms when they get older. Um, I was wondering if that was the case for you um, and what that transition was like. I was about 16 years old like before I practice compulsory form rotems in China, uh, we focus on compulsory and basics and improving our Nandu. And only when all those like are strong, it is a good time to move to optional form. So you have the more like um, multiple time to training like your basic mm -hmm. and make the good foundation. I see. So you use the compulsory forms as tools to improve your basics? Yes. So what would you imagine would happen if an athlete was younger and maybe didn't have as much experience uh, doing their basics and then wanted to do a uh, optional form? I think they can do both. They can do both together because mm -hmm. like um, compulsory form means like you can practice your basic, but op optional form and you can create by your own. Mm. And also you can create uh, multiple movements and do whatever you want, uh, multiple styles. So I, I think you can do both. It's not mm. conflict, but mm. you have to know what's the more important for you because you can do like optional form, but if you don't have much like a basic, skill it's hard to mm -hmm. get improved mm -hmm. yes interesting interesting so tell me more about that transition when you were 16 going from compulsory to optional forms were you only creating your forms by yourself or did you have a coach help you uh i i made most of them forms myself and also learned by watching other people's video mm. and and my 
also my teach didn't help me my phone, but they did. But they did give me a uh, advice on how to improve my phone. So mm-hmm. most of them, uh, I created by myself. Was that yeah. was it difficult at first? Did you also find it a difficult transition? Yes, for everyone, for every athlete, it's the first time to create uh, by your own forms. It's difficult, and also you don't know like what what what's going on. And like maybe good or maybe bad,、mm. but you don't know because this is your first. But you have to be try, and know what's the happening or you know what's the resort. So、um, for me, it's hard. But I create by myself. Also, I watch a lot of video by other athletes, so I can give some my idea come my head. So、mm-hmm. also like my teacher,、um, even. They didn't give me like ma- help me to make, but they give me a lot of advice.、Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you should that way, you should that way. So, okay, I tried. Interesting,、yeah. interesting. Tell me more about what makes a really good talu. So, I imagine like it's a very, very large scale of when you first start it,、um, and then you develop and、yes. develop. What are the characteristics of a really good talu? The foundation is you must have strong basics,、mm-hmm. and otherwise the Choreography cannot be showcased. Um, a good talu is your own. It shows your own unique style. Each event, like、uh, Changquan, Nanquan, Jian, Dao, Ah,、uh, Qiang, and like a street sword,、mm-hmm. all of their own specifics, like that good talu must show. And、um, for example, like street sword must be elegant and、uh, tight. And showcase shenfa and combine、um, both soft and、uh, hard movements,、mm-hmm. and also like bright sword must be fierce and attacking. A good talu highlights those points. Then there is a contrast and resin and、uh, different movements.、Mm-hmm. So I've always heard, like you know, the the straight sword is more elegant, and the broad sword is like very fast and and whippy. Do you know why that is? Like, where do those distinctions come from? Yeah, I think because the the each like weapon, like straight sword and like broad sword and spear and staff, they have their own specifics like style. When you practice straight sword, you have to care about the weapon shape. Because straight sword have the double sword, like,、uh, so you can be like very fast and like facing and attacking because you will hurt yourself.、Mm. Because they have like a both shell spear, they're very long, so you can be very very fast like staff because staff short and also a timing, so you can do your movement very fast and like power. But but spear is not that way. You have to like longer. And heavy, so you can't show cast like the、uh, staff. So you have to follow your weapon. You have to consider about that. Some people will very easier accept that way. If、mm. you are practice like straight sword, very powerful and very short power, it looks like oh, I think it's not that way. Yeah. So like everybody have to, like stereotype like like style. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, that was one of my、uh, questions: is why is it that some movements or weapons suit some athletes but not others? I think for professional athlete,、uh, we can do all of the wushu movements very well. It is based on basic and foundation. If you are shorter and stronger, then you will do quick and closed movements and emphasize your. Explosive power,、mm-hmm. and big movements、uh, like mine will not look as good for them. So athletes also have movements they like, and they will develop in their own style over time. This is just like a piece of clothing. Some people look good on it, but、uh, not for everyone. The same is true for picking movements. So you have to picking what's suited for yourself. It's not、uh, for everyone, but for most athlete, like、mm, professional athlete, so we can do all of the movements very well because we have the good foundation. 
So for the professional athletes, they can do any movement, but still because they maybe have some physical characteristics. Yes. Yes. I see. Or m- different types of muscles, muscles, very snappy or sharp. Um, yes, it's exactly. Yeah. Like, like me, my movements and my style, it's very like contrast big mm-hmm. and like upper and lower because my physical and my body shape. And also if I choose like shorter or stronger movements, it's not suit for me. Could you maybe give some uh, like examples of some movements that you would choose for yourself that are like, oh, this is like the perfect move for me. And then some moves that you would say like, oh, I will never put this in my form. It's very not advantageous. My stretch is that my physical shape is good for straight sword and spear. And the essential of straight sword and spear is the big movements and the big contrast. So I have a long length so I can showcase this qualities of straight sword and spear. The flip side is my speed will be slower mm-hmm. and then all the athletes. So even I have like strong straight sword and spear basic techniques but I won't choose like like shooter and stronger movement so I will show my advantage and um, also my poses in my form will be very open mm-hmm. and show my physical so my form will also showcase my basics so uh, a lot of athletes forms today are very um, performative and uh, maybe have more wow factors but That is not my style. So I will not make my form like that. You're saying that other athletes, they might have very flashy movements. um, Yes. And and that's not your style. You're more showcasing your basics because that's your style. Yes. Yes. So can you tell me a little bit about the process of discovering what your strengths were? Maybe if you have like examples of trying some movements and realizing that it didn't fit um, or trying some other movements and realizing that it's a very good fit. Uh, every time I create my form, I want to show the like type of different uh, style because mm-hmm. I don't want to show only one style. Like, oh, I only can do big movements and open and like a very big contrast. So I want to show the different way and I want to show the judge. I can do a lot of like movements because I have a good foundation. But I sometimes know. I feel like, oh, I can show them, but it's not good for resorts because Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, like in China, we professional athletes, we always focus focus on Nandu. It's the big score. So you have to be like, make sure your Nandu, it's okay and no deduction. And then you focus your form Mm -hmm. and your style something. So we don't, so that's why. So we don't need much time to figure out and you can create another so sometimes over time we are not like time to try like other movements and other style interesting interesting what part of your form do you enjoy the most or everything or nothing (laughs) okay and most of the time I I really really enjoy when I'm practicing my form because for me I think Nandu it's more like boring (laughs) <laughs> like it, it, it's very simple mm-hmm. you have to make sure you are go up and spin and then just very simple because it, you can't do like nandu with shenfa so it's no shenfa it's just like oh you have to go up and spin and then make mm-hmm. sure your when landing is stable that's all so but when i doing like my form so I really enjoy it because I can do a lot of sale and I can show, I can record my form. And when I finish my training, I will look at, I will check, oh, this is, I want this. Oh, here I can open more or here I have to be close more and here I have to be slow and here I have to be fast. So this is, I really enjoy it because this is a fun gift. So you can uh, process and you can make sure you are improved. Cool. So you enjoy the process of you see the movements that you've done and then you say like, oh, I can make this bigger or smaller um, yeah, or change the yeah. rhythm and make it more beautiful. I yes. See, I see. Very cool. So when you're practicing, when you're training for a competition to do your whole talu, do you film all of your practice forms? Yes. Hmm. I really like to record everything about uh, like, uh, because I can immediately say uh, what different. 
Mm. So mm. like I can say, oh, so sometimes when you do something and like, oh, you can say, oh, I will go back. Maybe tomorrow I will fix them. And then tomorrow you are forget. So <laughs> you don't know like what that feeling. So you have to be fixed it like immediately. I would love to hear more about um, the athletes that you watched who have most inspired the movements in your talu. Um, mm -hmm. Like, who do you draw inspiration from? Whose movements do you most like to uh, base your forms off of? Have you heard about uh, like Manin Jen? She's yeah, of course, Jin. yes. <laughs> oh yeah, it, like she she was my big sister and like teammate, and we have uh, like same body shape mm. and like also like same coaches. So she's my big influence on my wushu, nice. and also I created some movements from her taolu. I really like the older video because they create a form. It's very traditional. Mm. So right now, the movement just only want to show cast like fast. Mm. So I don't, I don't like it. I want more like meaningful. It's sure. like traditional. So I usually watch older video. It's I watch their created form and their optional form. Like oh, that this movement is really good because how can they I, they can make this? So I'm always trying to figure out. Earlier, like maybe 1918s, they only focus on form. Mm -hmm. They are not doing too much nandu. So their form is really good. So I can I can say which uh, athletes, but most of them, it's mm. really good. I will have to uh, <laughs> always watch more old school wushu. It's very cool. Yes. Um, cool. So I've also heard that sometimes provinces have characteristic movements, a more characteristic style to them. I was wondering if you could explain that a little bit um, and tell me a little bit more about what makes Anhui's wushu uh, unique. Yeah, because each provincial team will have different styles of coaches. Mm. Um, they will teach their own style to their students when teaching and over time, um, a traditional style has been formed. It's not really about the specific uh, like movements. Uh, I mean, but more like style. Yeah, so Anhui style, it's about basic. So we, we are trained uh, like too much, too much, like basic, uh, even like cakes and your weapon skills, your techniques, we, we always focus your basics. Mm -hmm. And also we have the best spear and straight sword basic. So we will always show that in, in our forms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I am cutting it off here. If you're interested in part two, please do subscribe. Sunny will cover a lot of the decisions that she made to put together her winning straight sword routine from the All China Games. And yeah, I'm super curious to hear what you guys thought of this content. I think that a lot of this stuff is simultaneously very obvious and super unobvious in that a lot of people kind of glaze over it or don't understand it when they when they think about their own talu or putting together their own forms to highlight their own strengths. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe for part two because it should be really interesting. Thanks guys.